Hello world, it's Mike again with Backwards Machining. Well, as you can tell, the uh, frequency uh, inverter came in. This is a uh, 4,000 watt three-phase inver inverter for this spindle. Um, so it looks like, for the most part now, I have everything. Um, wiring this looks like it's going to be a little tricky. Um, I mean, I'm not worried about the main wires. That, that'll be simple. But I'm going to want Mach 3 to turn this on and off and, you know, to adjust the speed and whatnot. Uh, also, I'm not sure if I showed you this or not, so bear with me. This just came in as well not that long ago. This is a five axis uh, CNC control board. Now, uh, right now I have a four axis on the CNC router. And though I need the fourth axis, uh, this, the rotary table, because on the gantry I have to run two steppers. I ended up having to use the fourth axis as a slave. So I needed a fifth axis technically to use four axes. So in comes this uh, CNC controller. Because I want to put that rotary table on the router so I can turn, you know, the woodworking projects and pipe for plasma cutting just you know uh it won't be that hard to do i know that it the hardest part is going to be wiring this up and then once it's done it's just going to be a matter of fine tuning it so you know might as well just go through and get the headache out of the way now to get everything situated uh anyway let me show you what I've made. Now I know you're probably getting sick and tired of seeing horses on my channel. So bear with me. I just wanted to show you guys this last one actually came out very well with no problems. Uh, you'll probably notice the tail is cut off. But again, that's not the machine's fault. That was, I only programmed this to go down 16 millimeters. The tail goes down to 21 something. But as you can see, I mean, there's really no point to continuing on past that. Um, I just wanted to show you the definition now that I know you're sick of horses so my next attempt was going to be this now I know you can barely see this so I want you to bear with me uh, my machine ended up freezing up on this this was my third attempt at trying to make this I ended up having to replace my USB cable. Don't know what the heck happened. You know, whatever. It is what it is. And after I did... This is what came from it. I'm very happy with the... Uh, just the detail of this is just incredible. I'm not sure if I can even, if I can put the light on or not, but it really is just incredible. This is with a one millimeter end mill. I'm not sure if you guys could even see it under there, but uh, I got the dust collection system set up. Everything is situated now. So, believe it or not, it, and it works amazing. 
I've, I've run this machine over the entire weekend and if you look at this there's hardly any dust at all I mean just wonderful wonderful little uh, invention these uh, bristles and this whole dust collection thing is right now it's attached to a shop vac uh, so it's not optimal <clears throat> but I'm going to end up picking up a, I don't know, it's an industrial uh, dust collection system. I might as well invest into, you know, something a little heavier duty. Uh, this The shop back fills up pretty quick. Um, and I will probably put it outside and build it its own little house because noise-wise, it's really hard to do anything in the garage with everything running. Now, a couple of modifications that I made. This you saw before with the plasma table. This is... Uh, this is attached to a relay to Mach 3. M3 turns that on. And M5 shuts it off. So what I'm doing is I'm running that to a zip strip. Uh, router, shop vac, and shop light. So basically when I hit M3, they all kick on. And M5, they all shut off. So, you know, running the program at nighttime, sometimes it gets late. Everything shuts itself off. It's, it's actually really nice. The other part of the control panel over here now, um, this light tells me that the controller is on. This is a plasma switch. This is for the USB for the computer uh, to plug in the controller card. And this is the on-off switch. And as you can see, that's the AC in. Uh, let me see if I can get a plug real quick. Hang on. Okay. So, you know, you plug your normal AC in here. You turn your machine on. And now you know all systems are go. Uh, the reason I wanted this light was because since the box the junction box is in the back of the machine sometimes you don't really hear it or notice it and I actually left it on accidentally one night just you know out of the blue just completely forgot about it so I kind of figure leaving this red beacon here will at least remind me well, hopefully, to shut the dang thing off. So next, I've got to find a way to mount this thing <clears throat> where <clears throat> it looks nice and it's not sitting here on the top of the machine, you know, where wires can be anywhere near this thing because that's the last thing I want. Last on the list of things I bought that I probably won't need is this. Um, this is an oscillating spindle sander. Uh, basically, this is just to help me clean up the parts off of the machine. Um, you know, I use this to sand the edges and whatnot. I have this and a scroll saw over on my bench. I'll show you that. This is the scroll saw. It's uh, it's the Ryobi. Nothing fancy, but you know, does the trick. I like it. But um, well, that's it, guys, for now. I'll keep you posted when I get the spindle done. Um, now that I got the frequency inverter, I am going to try to mount this and get it. Uh, done. I got the aluminum plate to mount it to. 
kind of sucks that this whole thing is now null and void after I spent so much time designing and doing it. But it is what it is. I know. Anyway. All right, guys. Have a good one. I'll talk to you later.